Hey, Alfalfa, do you know how much to charge for freelance? He says, per diem. All right, so seriously, how much do you charge for freelance? And I, I didn't think about this, but I had a freelancer come in and I ran a whole project by him and I said, hey, so what would you want with these freights? And he looked at me and he's like, how much do people usually charge? And I went, well, that depends on you. Let me, uh, let me run you through this a little bit here. We'll use me as an example and I'll take you point A to point B as if you were gonna pitch to me. So going off of my previous video of going from pitch to delivery, how much do you charge for freelance? Okay, so here's a little brief I put together for you. And now a brief could just be an email, it could be a phone call. It's basically just what a company is looking for and what they're asking. So in this, I'm saying, you know, need a new video for Matterform logo, five to 10 seconds long. So it's gonna be like an intro and give you the logo on there. So this is something that will happen. And basically what I'll do from there is take the brief and then retranslate it. So what I did is I made, you know, an artboard of what I wanted to do. And then I just started like spitballing different designs and ideas on how this animation could come in here. So, you know, just ink coming in, going out, explosions, vortexes, blah, 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 blah. All right, so then I take these guys and you can actually, with new XD, you can just copy these entire frames over and then just paste them right into XD. So now making my storyboard, I start the storyboard off with basically it's a intro that restates the purpose of the brief. So the brief said they need a new animation logo clips and stuff like that. And this is me and, and what I'm proposing to do. So this is kind of like an intro to the storyboard. So, you know, I, I would put a title to it, my name, my company name, contact name, purpose of the video and stuff. And then in here, I would make the storyboard. Uh, setting time on the storyboard is very important. So you kind of see what would happen at these seconds. And these are actually subject to change because you know we can do like five to 10 on the brief. It's a living and breathing document when, when you get to the, like the animatic part. What I'm doing here is, is I'm giving a description, 2D ink comes in, goes into frame, gets a little exploded, kind of runs out. We got some white lightning, changes the background font. Then we have a white explosion, a little bit of colors, creates a vortex, vortex opens up, splits, and then creates the logo animation. And then there's my company contact on, on each one of these. You keep wanting to like poke them, like, hey, this is me, this is my contact, this is the artboard. All right, so with that, then we transfer over to a quote. And for a quote, and with animations, always do milestones. 2D, 3D, do milestones. It will save your booty. So why do milestones? Well, to put it lightly, it's so you don't get in the So to have a milestone, so if you don't have any milestones, you're like, oh, this project's gonna take X amount of dollars, here you go. The issue with that is the client's gonna come back to you and they're gonna be like, oh, can you make this change? Oh, can you do this? Oh, can you do that? Oh, can you do this? So if you had a storyboard and then you had an animatic and then you had an animation and then you have this final product and then all of a sudden the client comes back to you and be like, mm, you know, instead of having the character have a teacup, let's have the character pour some wine. That's a complete change. You're gonna do so much work for free just because the client kept changing things. So by doing milestones, be like, you approve the storyboard, you approve the animatic, you approved the final animation. Then any sort of change after that, as long as it's like not something that goes against another approval. So if you do an animatic and the client says, oh, this animatic's good, and say it's, you know, a, a character drinking a sip of tea and then you send them the final product and they're like, oh, you know what? I think instead of sipping a cup of tea, they should be playing drums. That's completely outside of the approved animatic. So you can charge for that. So this is, this is kind of like a CYA. It saves your just to 
put it out there. So whenever you're doing animation things, you should really have milestones as in terms of payment. A third and a third and a third, I usually do storyboard, animatic, final. Now, if you're doing like 3D, you can add clay renders in there. A lot of times I give them a lot on the storyboard. Like you get like two, three, four, five changes on the storyboard, depending on the client. And then you can chip into the other stuff. And that's how you save your <laughs> Thanks, Milestone Adam. All right, so now you know why you want to do Milestone. Uh, with this, I always label quote, you know, you want your name, your contact info, some dates going in there. Um, for this particular milestone, because we're doing, you know, a nice animation here, what we're gonna do is we're going to do it for storyboard approval. That's kind of like comes in with the project uh, and they get two rounds of revisions before extra costs, then got an animatic. Uh, this is basically like an animated storyboard for the clients and then they have one round of revisions and then final looks with one round of revision. Each one of these with the storyboard approvals, uh, we also want 33% down of what our estimate is. Here's our little estimated total. And when they finish another milestone, this would be 33% and this would be 33%. So this would be the, the remaining last round. And I do this for a couple reasons. One is you never know if uh, the new guy, the new marketing agent is gonna be like, hey, we don't wanna go in this direction and your project gets shelved. This happens, okay? By doing a milestone and by getting a third of your project after the milestone, you kind of get the process of getting paid as well. So if you're getting paid on a net 30, that means 30 days after you get an invoice, you would get paid. So let's say I do this milestone and, or I'm sorry, let's say they, they do this milestone, uh, I can actually put in the billing for this milestone while I'm actually working on this guy. So this would kind of way the, the payment can start reoccurring because if these are one week apart, let's say this was a Monday and then this is the following Monday, this could take a lot longer on their net 30 because of the way net 30s work and the weekends and stuff like that in between. And then this is my estimated total, $4,800. Well, how did I get this total? Well. Let me show you this thing. This is how to figure your cost of doing business. All right, uh, CODB, okay? And here's kind of like a sample one I put together for you guys. So you can kind of list out how it is. So let's say you have a rent and mortgage, you times it by 30, this is your daily rate for just to live wherever it is you're living. Now, of course, again, these are all gonna change. Uh, let's say computers, $5,000 by 360 I add a 1.5 cost to my computer fee so you know you can upgrade and at the end of the year buy a new machine you kind of want to grow you don't want to be stagnant so at 1.5 on that it comes about $80 a day now if I have any rental or gear costs I take the rental and gear costs and I times it by 20%. The reason why I do that is because this covers you in case you got more gear to rent that you didn't realize it, this 20% actually really helps you and saves you. Same thing with render farm. Always take the cost of render farm and times it by 1.5 because I can tell you there's tons of times that I'll use a render farm and then be like, oh crap, I gotta, I gotta redo 60 frames. I messed something up. I forgot something. You know, this this is where that comes into play and it's okay to do this. Don't feel like you're ripping people off. Situationals, now this is uh, where like, you know, if you have a family of four, uh, it's a little different. If you're living at, you know, in mom's basement, that's a little different. So this is all situational stuff um, on how much that you pay. So, uh, you know, just say food and clothes, $600 a month, that's $20 a day. Uh, cell phone, $4, um, electric and internet, you know, $13 a day, insurance, $5 a day, car, you know, $9 a day, depending on what type of car. I mean, if you have, have a, you know, a supercar, you know, this, this amount can drastically go up. You never know. So this gives us the life to live costs. This would, if I just wanted to just break even and just kind of live my life, this is how much I need to make a day. Okay. So that's your MVP is now your profit margin. So that's your life to live cost. And I do 60% on that, okay? And the reason why I do 60% is because as a freelancer, you gotta pay your own taxes. You have to put up with a lot of BS and overhead. Um, so just to be clear on that, like 60% margin, 
It's a good margin. It's an okay margin. Okay, that gives three hundred and seventeen dollars a day, but for an eight-hour day, that's forty dollars an hour. Okay, but we don't stop here. All right, this is like you're making you're making money. All right, you're not you know this isn't great, but you're making money. And again, now we go into what I call the thumb sucking fee. Okay, the thumb sucking fee is basically because you're a freelancer, you're not working every day, you're hunting for next jobs, you're doing this, you're doing that, and everything. You take your minimal valuable product, yes, you are a product, this is your product, you are selling yourself, okay? Times it by 1.5, this is the base of what I would say to start with, which gives us $60 per hour. And I say base because I charge more than this with, with with clients. Sometimes I go two, sometimes I go three. It depends on what the client is, what the project is, and, and, and how it is. But if when you're first starting out, 1.5 is usually a good rate. Okay. It's a it's it's a good going rate on on adding your services and kind of giving you a little buffer because if you think about it, every day that you're working at your normal rate, if you're not working this 1.5 kind of goes into those other days because you do have overhead as a person you know as a business okay so that brings us to about 60 dollars an hour and if we go all the way back to our estimated production time of 10 days we gotta make that 10 days if they approve everything straight through this 10 days is real important that you have to hit this is your deadline this is what you told people so you take that hourly rate times it by your 80 hours which would be 10 days or two weeks um and then you would stick that in there to forty eight hundred dollars so that's how i get a cost for doing something as simple as a five second animation now this isn't a simple five second animation this is going to take you know two weeks we're going to take 80 hours to do this you know this animation so uh that's how you quote things now if you had let's say i was bringing in freelancers you would stick in a freelancer here let's say i had employees i would stick in employees costs here and you would stay any edit cost that you can think of you stick in here let's say you have some medicine that you can stick in here now if you're noticing that your cost of doing business is going completely astronomical and let's say this this is like you know 260 dollars an hour then you got to start rethinking what you're doing here okay um if you're going to start doing stuff that's way over the amount of freelance of, of what freelance should be um then you really have to start thinking like what can i cut out of my life or could i substitute some of my life with a job and then do freelance on the side this is kind of where you would where you would stick out uh, as in terms of like you know what you're doing for a living like now some of you guys might be like wow 60 dollars an hour that's, that's insane it's really not um not when it comes to to doing you know high-end things and graphics so just be aware of that codb and that's how you do it and that's how you want to do it if the clients come back to you and they're like oh no I, I can't pay this you can ask them okay what what's your budget and then you take what your cost of doing business is and their budget and then you'd be like okay well i can do this for you at this budget so we came in at forty eight hundred dollars for 10 days worth of work let's say a client came back and was like oh we only have twenty four hundred dollars well that's half that's that's five days of work you can come back to them and be like, this is what I can do for you in those five days. Now, it might not actually be this big, huge project scale that you were anticipating, but that's kind of how you do it. If you hop into something and you say to somebody, oh, you know, 10 days worth of work is going to cost you five grand and they come back at you and they're like, oh my God, they're not real clients. They're not looking for animation people because like a studio that would have been in like twenty thousand dollars so because they have all those employees they have all that overhead they have all of that stuff so i, I just want you to be aware that you know sometimes you're going to ask for money and people are going to be like i can't do anything of that so the way you deal with that is you want to always try to engage the client you don't want to say well this is what i charge and the client goes well go f yourself 
So that's something that happens quite often, especially if you're not dealing with bigger companies because they may not realize the budget that they, they have or they may not have the budget that they should for a bigger project. So by being able to walk them into that, you're able to actually get the, the get the ball rolling for their bigger stuff. So they may be like, oh, well, we can't afford this, but we have this here that should fit that. And then you get in the door and you start working with these guys. Now, the one thing that we didn't talk about is we didn't talk about licensing or any of that stuff. And, and I'll get into that into future videos. Like if you're doing like photography or if you do character design and you're licensing this stuff out to the client, you know, how much should that charge? Like what is their campaign route and like how much in percentage you should ask for that. So just be weary that it's, it's, it's not set in stone. And also remember that as you build your clients and as you build your portfolio, you're going to be able to get bigger and bigger jobs. All right. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions, drop them in the link. If you like it, like it. If you really like it, subscribe, do that kind of stuff. Uh, still growing this channel. Anyway, uh, next hit that we'll do on this one is I'm going to show you guys how to build the animatic. So from what we saw, we're going to build this animatic and we're going to go from there. All right. Like and sub, do the thing. Laters.